Hello and welcome to the Australian Bitcoin podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wilczynski. I'm recording this on 30th December 2022. So for those who are listening now, I wish you Merry Christmas. If you do celebrate Christmas, I hope you manage to spend some quality time with your family and loved ones. And hope you're enjoying the great weather. I love summer. I love Australian summer. I love the beach. And I hope you guys enjoy it too. And all the best for New Year. I think it's going to be an exciting year. It always, Bitcoin is always exciting. And there's a lot of things to look forward to in Bitcoin. So seeing as we are at the end of the year, I wanted to do an episode, a two-part episode, where I look back on what occurred in 2020 and make predictions in the future. In this episode, I'll focus only on the price, on the price action. And in another episode, which I'll release in maybe about two weeks, I'll look over what occurred in Bitcoin development and Bitcoin adoption, Bitcoin news. But uh, yeah, in this episode, I'll focus on the price. It's something I get a lot of questions about. A lot of people ask me, especially now that we are in, in a bear market, people ask me where I think the price will go when the next bull market will start and how high do I think the price will go in the next bull market. So I'll just try to make some of them, share my thoughts. You can make of that what you want. This show is brought to you by hardblock.com.au. Hardblock is Australian Bitcoin exchange where I work at. We encourage self-custody. We help our customers set up secure storage. You can set up, set and forget automated dollar cost averaging with automated payments from your bank to Hardblock and automated withdrawals to your custodial wallet. If you haven't yet, give us a shot. But okay, let's move on to the main content of the show. So first, I have to make the usual disclaimers. This is not financial advice. I'm just sharing my opinions. I only make educated guesses. I could be wrong. I probably would be wrong. Bitcoin is very unpredictable. It's hard to know exactly what is going to happen. There's a lot of outside factors that could impact the the predictions, black swan events. There could be some potential, you know, who knows. For all we know, maybe next year there will be a nuclear war between Russia and America. And who knows what that would do to the price. And uh, at that point, would you even care about the price? Or even something maybe more likely will be looking forward will probably be a lot of regulation. What's that going to look at? How will the governments react to Bitcoin? And that would impact the price. But I'll talk about this in another episode. But what I'm trying to get across is this is only a very rough, educated guess because people do ask me and I'm just going to make some patterns by some predictions. But yeah, you have to make your own financial decisions. There's also what you decide depends on your personal circumstances. And I say, don't hold me responsible. I'm just, people ask me for my thoughts and I'm just sharing my thoughts. You do what you want to do. Having said that, I will brag a little bit. I did make a post all the way back in 2017, before the 2017 peak in that bull market, I made some predictions. And in that post, I recommended, I suggested that people should start selling off when Bitcoin goes above 18,000 US dollars. Investors should start buying up again, accumulating again when it goes below $10,000 after it crashes. And as it turned out, and I predicted that it would crash to maybe somewhere around $5,000. And as it 
turned out Bitcoin went to a top of around 19,000 US dollars and when crash when crash it went to a bottom of around 3,000 US dollars. So my prediction was very accurate and at that point and uh, I know some people read it and some people made a killing based on that what I suggested. But again just because I was right before doesn't mean I'll be right again. There's a a lot of luck and chance, but you can see that blo you can see that blog that blog post. I, I, I'm going to actually make a blog post about for this show for this episode because I'll be talking a lot about charts here and prices, and it's hard to get that across on a podcast episode. But I'll do my best to keep things very simple. But if somebody does want to look at some of the charts and prices that I'll be looking at, if you're doing it by visualization, they can look at my blog post. I will link it in the show notes description. And in that blog post, I will link to my older blog post where I made those predictions. That older blog post isn't live anymore, but it can be seen on the Internet Archive on the Wayback Machine, and I'll link to that so people can verify that I'm not making stuff up. And I, I didn't make any prediction, I didn't make any post about the current bubble, the current the just past bull market. So I have nothing to link to link there. Okay, also during this episode, I'll talk in US dollars because most of the prices that we see and discuss most metrics are in US dollars and just to keep things consistent, I think it would be better to just use US dollars. So also, there will be some assumptions that I will be making in in my predictions. One assumption is that there will be growth in Bitcoin adoption over the long term. I can think there is bit growth in Bitcoin adoption, growth in Bitcoin, Bitcoin development, these things are happening. And I'll talk about what's happening in my next episode. I don't want to go into that, but that's an assumption that I'll be making. I also make the assumption that as Bitcoin gets larger, the market cap larger, Bitcoin ecosystem becomes larger, the Bitcoin cycles, the bubbles and the crashes will become less volatile and more drawn out. Which is which obviously makes sense. Something bigger like a big blue chip stock is not going to be as volatile of us as a smoke up. That applies everywhere. And I think that will and it has applied to Bitcoin. Can see that the volatility is less than it ha was in the past. So apart from my blog post, you can also Google a Bitcoin rainbow chart. I think that's a really useful chart for somebody who wants to know the context of the prices and comp if they want to visually compare where the Bitcoin price is relative to previous bubbles and what's a good buying opportunity and a selling opportunity. I would recommend you Google Bitcoin, Bitcoin Rainbow Chart. There's one on a website called blockchaincenter.net and they have a really good one. And also I have to say, because people are going to criticize me when I say so, like most Bitcoiners, when I, even my original post four or five years ago, I, I would, my opinion is that you should probably never sell all your Bitcoin, but some people might want to and that's what most Bitcoiners say. They would say never sell your Bitcoin because you're at risk of the market turning against you. But some people want to do a bit of gambling and try and to increase their stack over the long term. So in that case, you might want to try and sell off a little bit in, during the highs and accumulate during the lows. And I think, yeah, the Bitcoin rainbow chart is a good way to see when, when's a good time to accumulate and when's a good time to maybe slow down on the buying. 
but in, in the end, you know, for a lot of people, the goal is to have as much Bitcoin in the long term. So, okay, discussing, we we'll discussed the past a bit and the past two years. From this year, it's very clear that we are now in a bear market. It's starting the obvious, but it was not obvious at the beginning of the year. Um, at the beginning of 2022, we still weren't sure. Maybe it was we were part of a big, some people were making predictions of a big super cycle and even going to over 100,000 US dollars. And the reason I think a lot of people were thrown off was that this this bull market in 2021 was a bit different than the previous bull markets in that there were two peaks. There was a peak around April 2021 and there was another one around October 2021. And both these peaks were kind of bland. It's as if the top of the peak was chopped off. If you look at the chart, you can see that. And it's different to over previous cycles, over previous bull markets. In voice bull markets, there was towards the peak, there was one peak and it had a very sharp pointy end to, towards at the peak, the price had an almost in those previous peaks, the price rose almost vertically upwards and then crashed and it was a very quickly and had a, a yeah it was a, like if you look at the chart it's very pointy and in these ones in 2021 there were two and they were very kind of blunt so i think that confused a lot of people because they were expecting that very sharp peak again and since it didn't happen we were thinking well is it going to go up even further is this just um bad trap but as it turned out, voice were the peaks and it didn't rise any further. And I think the reason you had this different pattern in 2021, in fact, I'm pretty confident that I know the reason, is that a lot of people, a lot of wires, we use the same metrics that I'll be discussing here. And we look at the same patterns, the same charts, and they learn from the past. and they do they want to accumulate more bitcoin so the stats when when they start when that kind of vertical very fast rise was occurring they started selling off part of their bitcoin in the hope of accumulating more in the bear market and because they started selling off we never reached that peak so and that's what you expect as like I said, as Bitcoin gets bigger and as the market gets more experienced in Bitcoin, more sophisticated, you have less volatility. What this also, and you can see that there's a chart, a link in the blog post where you can see, which suggests what I'm saying, which that there was a, a lot of old Bitcoins were moved during the peak this current, this current peak and that indicates that all the Bitcoin wires and all the Bitcoin holders were selling their, some of their stack. But a lot of these people were true believers in Bitcoin and during the bear market, they'll, some of that money they'll be using to fund the lifestyle, that's true, but a lot of that money, the pretty frugal people, anybody who knows Bitcoin as knows they're pretty frugal, and a lot of that money will be using to accumulate more Bitcoin uh, in the bear market, which is right now. So we'll, that should act as support. And again, it would suggest less volatility. It's part of the reason why I don't think the price would drop much lower than it has now. And I think I'm gonna disappoint some people because a lot of people that talk to me were expecting a boom market towards the end of 2023 that the next boom market will start and i don't think it's gonna start that early unfortunately so there'll be a bitcoin bear market and people have to be patient 
But on the other side, it might be a good time to dollar cost averaging and accumulate. But if you look at the past, like some of the past, past bubbles, and I, I'll now start in 2013-14. So there was, okay, for those who don't know, there was a Bitcoin bull market and top around January 2014, around December 2017, and obviously one in 2021, where there were two. And there were more in the past, but I won't look at the, even further back in the past, but I won't look at that because I think it's somewhat less relevant. And to make this podcast episode shorter and less confusing also. <laughs> But okay, if we look at the time between January 2014 and December 2017, that's about four years. Between December 2017 and October 2021, that's almost four years, maybe three and a half. The cycles and the bear markets happen roughly every four years. And so I think maybe that's a good why to estimate when the next one could possibly start. And that would really suggest that we should expect a bear market to continue throughout 2023 and really probably most of 2024, maybe ending towards the end of 2024 with a new bull market in 2025 maybe a peak price 2026. That would also match the Bitcoin halving schedule. The Bitcoin, the next Bitcoin halving is due in March 2024. And so for the people at home who don't know, a Bitcoin halving is where the rate of increase of Bitcoin supply gets decreased. So the rate of increase of Bitcoin supply gets decreased. So Bitcoin gets, there's only going to be ever 21 million Bitcoin, but there's less than 21 million Bitcoin mined right now. There's around 20 million mined. I don't know the exact number, but yeah, around maybe a million to go. And it gets mined every 10 minutes. So the supply of Bitcoin increases every 10 minutes. And every four years, the amount that gets introduced into the Bitcoin supply gets reduced by half. So it's called the halving. That, that occurs every four years. So the next one is due March 2024. And usually the, all the previous bull markets, they occurred soon after the halving. And again, that's not a bit of not surprising because since the halving reduces the rate of increase of supply, that creates that lower supply means there's less selling pressure on Bitcoin. There's less people, there's less mine, miners are selling less Bitcoin. So it creates upwards pressure on the Bitcoin price. And if you look at that Bitcoin rainbow chart, it shows you where the halving, uh, halvings are. So based on the Bitcoin rainbow chart, the price around end of 2025, the peak price would be around US $200,000. Okay, so I'll talk a bit about what price we can expect because that's kind of also the peak price. And I think the peak price can be somewhat misleading because in all the bull markets, like it reaches the peak price momentarily for a day or two, but the actual price throughout the year is much lower than the peak in each cycle. So I'm gonna compare the prices in the cycles to expect, uh, to kind of come up with a number that we can expect, a more reasonable number. So I'll use the 200 daily moving average to compare the prices in the cycles. So the 200 daily, daily moving average, but a daily moving average is just the average of the price of, over the past 200 days. 
so if Bitcoin price is twenty thousand now, like it, if we if we went up to 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 twenty thousand today, but it's been at fifteen thousand for most of the past two hundred days. The daily moving average today would be around just over fifteen thousand. So basically, it smooth, smooths out that volatility on the curve. So I'll go through the, what the prices were the 200 day moving average reached during the peaks and troughs of each Bitcoin bull market and bear market. Around in 2014, at the peak, the 200 daily moving average reached 650 US dollars. Then in 2015, in the bear market, it reached a bottom of 250. Then in the next peak in 2018, it reached $10,300. And then went to a bottom of 4450 in 2019. In 2022, the daily moving average reached a peak of 48,000 and currently it's at a low of 20,000 US dollars. For these numbers again, 650, 250, 10,300, 4,400, 48,000, 20,000. First, I'll, I'll compare each of those peaks to the to the bottom that followed it. So it's 650, and then went down to 250. So that means it, it decreased by 2.6. In 2018, it went from 10,300 to a bottom of 4,450. So that's 2.3. Then in the current bear and bull market. It went from 48,000 to 20,000 now, which is 2.4. So again, that ratio, the ratio between the high and the low for each cycle was 2.6, 2.3, and 2.4 now. So that's actually remarkably consistent. So around 2.4. And how much did it rise between each peak? The peak 2014, 650, compared to the next peak, 10,300. So that's an increase of 16 times. So from 2014 bubble to the 2017 bubble, that's a 16 time increase, 16 times increase. Then the next one, from 10,300 in 2017 to 48,000 in 2021, that's a 4.6 times increase. So that's actually, so if the increase is much lower. So it was, the difference between the previous cycles was 16 times increase and in this cycle, it was a 4.6 times increase. So yeah, the rise wasn't as high as it was previously, which is not unexpected because like, we expect Bitcoin, as Bitcoin becomes bigger, it's going to have less volatility and the price rises won't be as dramatic. If the peak that has just passed in 2021 was 48,000, and we had a ratio of increase of 16 and then 4.6. So let's be conservative and in the next bull market, the increase, it will increase 3x, the daily moving average. So 3x, 48,000, that's around 150,000 US dollars. So basically, the daily moving average we would expect based on that, or based on the past, 
to be 150,000 US dollars. So that wouldn't be the peak price, but the daily moving average price, which means the price should go above 150,000 US dollars and stay above it for a few weeks. And given the past peak to troughs, the ratio was very consistent, like we said, 2.4. So what can we, after the next bull market, what would be kind of a, a ballpark figure of where we can expect the price to fall to? Well, if it falls 150,000 divided by 2.4 again, would give us around 60,000 US dollars in 2027. To kind of summarize, I hope, again, I hope this is not too confusing for everybody at home, but it should kind of give you a ballpark figure of what kind of prices we could expect. Again, there could be many outside factors that change this. Bitcoin is unpredictable. But for anybody who asks me, what is my prediction for Bitcoin price in the future? To summarize, my answer is, I don't truly really know, and Bitcoin is unpredictable. But my best guess, guess is that we will move sideways in the range 10,000 to 40,000 till early 2025. Around 2025, I would expect a bull market to start that might take us to over 150,000 US dollars for a few weeks before we drop again to around 60,000 US dollars. Yeah, I hope the listeners at home that you got something out of that. Tell me if you did. Uh, you can contact me, danielw at hardblog.com.au. You can also find me on Twitter. So yeah, let me know if you found that useful or if you thought it's just stupid prediction and astrology. Um, no better than astrology. Yeah, happy new year, enjoy your next year, and I'll be back soon with another episode looking back at everything that happened in 2022. Bye.